Thank you everyone for joining this webinar today. Um, we really appreciate um, you joining and listening in. So this is our very first webinar um, titled How to Effectively Contact Legislators. Um, we at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation focus on five main groups and one is policy. So we wanted to really ensure that we're educating the public on you know, how to contact legislators from the first step to the very end. Um, so I w before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Um, for all of you attendees that have joined, we are in webinar mode, so all of you are on mute. Um, you won't be able to unmute yourself during the call, but if you have any questions, um, there is a Q&A chat box at the very, very bottom, so please send through any questions that you might have, and at the very end, we will um, hopefully have time to answer them and have a little bit of discussion. Um, so with that said, um, I thought we'd kick it off and introduce the Patient Safety Movement Foundation team. Um, I will go ahead and start. My name is Sarah Miller. I'm our Director of Partnerships here at the Foundation, and I've been here for about three and a half years now. So I will pass it on to Ariana. Hey, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm Ariana Longley, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, and I've been with the Foundation for a little over five years and uh, really interested in how we can um, help you contact your legislators. So with that, I'll pass it off to Sana. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sana Dattar, and I'm a health policy intern with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. Um, I've only been here for the summer, but I'm really excited and interested to get involved um, with policy and help um, PSMF with that. And so I'll pass it over to Monica. Hi, I'm Monica McDade, and I'm the campaign direct director for Unite for Safe Care, and I've been with the foundation since December. Great. Well, with that said, Sana, do you want to advance to the next slide? And we'll pass it over to Ariana to give a little bit of an intro. Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's on the line. Um, I see that we also have some international presence on the line. So thank you for joining um, in Saudi Arabia at 11 p.m. your time. Um, that is dedication. Uh, I know that many of you probably know uh, a little or even a lot about the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, but for those that may be new to our network, I'm just gonna spend a few minutes sharing our work. Um, and also I wanna just uh, address that if anyone is or, um, joining us internationally, this is um, really about how to uh, contact legislators here in the United States. So the links that you'll see um, lead to our US government websites. However, I'm sure that many of the concepts can still uh, translate into uh, action outside of the United States. So uh, the Patient Safety Movement Foundation is an international nonprofit that has a goal of zero preventable patient deaths um, if you've been with us for a while, we, we started in 2012 and our initial goal was to reach zero by 2020. Um, but obviously we're here now in 2020 and we know that we still have a lot of patient harm and death that's occurring. Um, so we have extended that goal to 2030. We feel like that really audacious goal is important um, to focus on zero because one preventable patient death is one too many. Um, I can imagine that many of you may have experienced harm yourself. Uh, or may have lost a loved one. And we are here because of you. We don't want any more of this to happen. And so each person, each individual is really important. And for that reason, we have to try to achieve zero. Um, we also have focused on 2030 because we feel that there's urgency in attaching our mission to a date. Um, we could certainly say zero by 2050 and feel like we might be um, more likely to make that goal, but we want people to urgently feel like we have to do something about that. And that's part of this legislative push as well. We, we need to talk to our congressional leaders and leaders across the world to make sure that patient safety is a priority. So um, with that, uh, we, we believe that storytelling is extremely important to help legislators understand these issues more deeply, whether it was a harm because of a medication, a harm because of a lack of communication. We, we have to let our legislators know what's going on real life, day in and day out. Um, so we will be sending out this presentation as a PDF um, after the webinar is over. Um, so any of the hyperlinks you see in our deck, you will be able to click on. I mentioned our actionable patient safety solutions here. 
Um, these are clinical best practice documents that we've put together and they're made freely available to administrators and clinicians, as well as you if you really wanted to look at them. Um, but they're, they're, I guess, tools that these hospitals and other healthcare organizations can put in place. And if they do, we've seen these hospitals and healthcare organizations across the world achieve amazing things, reducing preventable harm and reducing preventable deaths in their uh, systems and institutions. So I bring those up because you may be on the phone today because you've had someone in your family or yourself, as I've mentioned, be affected. And so uh, if you are speaking to your legislator, these actionable patient safety solutions can be helpful to show them that there is a solution for many of these issues. We have over 39 solutions on our website and, and are rolling out new solutions um, quarterly. Uh, and pass it over to uh, the next slide. World Patient Safety Day was declared last year uh, by the World Health Organization. And so the second annual is coming up on September 17th. And Unite for Safe Care is our awareness campaign uh, around this issue. Most people don't know that this is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Uh, it's 14th in the world uh, in terms of patients dying in hospitals. And so uh, we want to raise the awareness. Um, we will be having a small memorial ceremony on September 16th and 17th in Washington, D.C. with some volunteers. And then we also have a, a wonderful program designed uh, as a virtual event on YouTube, and that will air on uh, September 17th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we also have uh, a way that people around the globe can walk with us. Uh, that is a downloadable app called Charity Miles. And uh, for example, our CEO has been walking uh, over 1,500 miles. Uh, basically, he is virtually walking across the United States uh, from ballpark to baseball park. He's a big baseball fan. Um, so we have over 500 people walking with us around the globe and we hope to get to 200,000 miles, uh, symbolic of the 200,000 people who lose their lives to preventable medical errors in the United States every year. Uh, we do have a, a big awareness campaign starting right after Labor Day on September 8th, and for 10 days we hope to raise funds and uh, we'll have a, a little auction online, um, and we hope that people will help us push out that message on social media. I should also mention that we have a number of partners around the globe who are also activating in place, and they are uh, lighting up buildings, their hospitals, uh, fountains, flagpoles. Um, they are walking in solidarity with us on that same day. So uh, if you do want to activate, um, take pictures and post on social media and share those with uh, those you love. So I will pass it on to the next slide. Great, so let's get started um, and get into how to reach out to legislators. So there are in the United States several people you know, that you can go through in order to get your message heard. And so in the House of Representatives, you can look up your congressional district and find out who your local congressperson is using your zip code. Um, to a member of the Senate, you can look up who you should be reaching out to by the state. And additionally, there are state legislator representatives. So these would be people in the state Senate who are more local to whatever state you live in. And so you can look these up by state as well. Additionally, there is an access to federal legislation where you can look on Congress's website and see the types of things, the types of proposals they've already been set out by different legislators so you can see what kinds of issues they are already interested in and that can help you to connect with your congressperson senator or whoever you may want to reach out to so as ariana mentioned earlier sharing stories is extremely important in the public policy process um, it's necessary to bring awareness to an issue and inspire change. So legislators will hear um, and receive individuals and their stories a lot better than organizations. So although we at the patient safety movement 
have been pushing to get policy passed that is going to help us reach our goal of zero preventable deaths, it is always a lot better for legislators to hear individually from people in their constituency that they are actually there to serve and they want to help. So although it seems daunting, you know, reaching out to a legislator in that type of position, they are people too, and they will connect best with other people that are individual constituents that are going to reach out to them um, who have been touched by a lot of these issues. So this is really one of the best ways to inspire real change is by sharing your own story or stories that you've heard from people within your district or in your state that have actually gone through, um, you know, the hospital system and seen some of the preventable deaths or preventable harm that happens. So one of the main ways to reach out to a legislator is to write a letter. Um, this is a little old fashioned in certain ways, um, now that we have other ways to reach out through email. Um, but writing a letter, whether it is an email or an actual letter that you're gonna be sending through the mail, um, will make a great impact on legislators if it's individualized, personalized, and has specific information. So some of the most effective information that you can include in a letter is your personal story, how you've been touched by preventable medical harm um, or errors or deaths, and how some kind of bill or some kind of change in the health policy or patient safety policy would help impact you and your district that you live in. So this could be something that you have experienced in a certain area or in a certain health system, and you wanna talk about how a change in policy could actually make a difference. And then additionally, if you do have a specific request or an ask um, with the reasoning behind it, so let's say that's something like an issue happened because of lack of communication within um, patient handoff in a hospital, you could have a specific ask and say, dear legislator, please um, take a look at this specific issue. This is what has happened. Um, and if you could make a change or draft a bill that is gonna have an impact on this specific issue. Um, so really knowing what you want to ask your legislator for or what type of change you hope to see is gonna make them understand your point of view and your story a little bit better. So the format of a letter or an email that you're gonna to send to either your congressperson, your senator, or a local legislator, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set the stage, paint a picture of what's currently happening in patient safety. So as many of you know, it is the third leading cause of death in the United States, and you most likely will have a personal experience with it. So you want to talk about that in a really general and broad view and then describe why do you want change? What change is going to happen that would make a positive impact on not only your own life but other people and to avoid certain issues from coming up again in the future. So discussing how a positive impact could be made on yourself, your district, um, and other people like you is really going to um, hit home with the legislator because they want to be there for their constituents and they want to make a difference um, in the capacity that they're able to and that's going to be for the people that they represent. Um, and then you just want to finish with a hook or a call to action if you have a specific ask um, that you're going to be talking about. You want to save that for the end and say this is what I really want. Um, and remember always to thank them for their time because they have a number of issues on their plate. And if this is one that's really important to you, you want to make sure that you're thanking them for taking the time to at least read what you have to say. So the readable length um, of an email or a letter that you send should be about 100 to 300 words. Um, this has been found by the Congressional Management Foundation that most legislators are going to want to keep read a letter or an email that is kept within that range. Um, anything shorter, they may not take as seriously. Anything longer, they may not have the time to read completely. Um, so you want to make sure to be concise and to the point of what um, your goal is in reaching out. So include a subject line. Um, this is important in order to catch their attention. Make sure it's directed at um, patient safety, whatever issue that you are particularly asking for. So make sure to keep it concise. Um, just so that they still have the time to read through what you're saying.
Okay, next we're going to talk about how to personalize um, a letter or an email that you send. So oftentimes personalization is what makes um, a letter or email stand out. Most legislators, whether it's a congressperson or a senator, probably get hundreds, if not thousands, um, of letters and emails probably each day, each month that they need to sort through. So personalizing a letter or an email is going to really help you stand out and make them want to contact you um, and make a change. So some of the things that you can research about a particular legislator is their political party. So you can use this to your advantage depending on what party they belong to. You can look at the party platform and say, hey, there is something in your party platform regarding patient safety or regarding um, an improvement of healthcare quality. So you can use that to your advantage to make a connection with a legislator. Next, you wanna look at the committees and leadership that they hold. Um, so if this is a person of Congress um, in the House of Representatives, they're gonna be on a certain committee and that committee will deal with a specific issue or a more niche issue than what um, Congress will generally be dealing with. So if their committee that they're on happens to deal with healthcare, um, or even if it doesn't, try to find a way to kind of connect that to the issue that you want to talk about. Um, and if, even better, if they are in a position of leadership, let's say they're the chair of a certain committee, you can use that as well to say, I know you um, are the chair on this committee and you have a big say in what happens. And so this is why I'm reaching out to you specifically, because I think you can really make a change or an impact. Um, and then you also want to talk about or address the issues of focus. So you can look up any legislator, um, any congressperson, senator, and kind of see the issues um, that they focus on or what they have been fighting for throughout their career, whether they're uh, new in the position or they've been around for a long time. Usually legislators have certain issues that they like to focus on and that they want to talk about. So if you can find one that connects um, to what you're interested in advocating for, that's a good way to make that connection. And then the next thing you wanna research is personal items about the legislator. So where they're from, a lot of times if this is a state representative, they're gonna be from the state that you are in, potentially they could be from the same city, um, and that kind of goes into where did they go to school. A lot of times legislators wanna represent the districts where they came from or where they grew up, where they, got their education. So let's say you went to the same high school or the same college um, as your legislator, you might want to bring that up because that's going to foster that connection as a person, you and the legislator, just two people who have these commonalities. Um, additionally, a lot of them have different interests, hobbies, um, and family and kids. So that's a really big one. Most of these people are parents too. And if you are a parent, um, a lot of times parent to parent discussions um, are a lot, go a lot better um, when you have that connection. So reaching out and making sure you know that if you have been affected by a patient safety issue, and you wanna talk, up, talk about and reach out parent to parent, that's a really important way to get their attention. Um, so kind of going off of that, you wanna answer the question of why should they care? So if you have um, experienced preventable preventable medical harm or death, and it has to deal with a child like I talked about, you can reach out and say, you know, you should care about this legislator because you have kids of your own or you have family members that could potentially go through something like this. So you want to kind of answer that question. Why should they care and find that connection to make sure that they are going to be um, cognizant and aware of this issue? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is making a call. So this is really similar to emails and letter writing, um, but it's just a little more concise. So the difference between writing a letter and email and making a call is oftentimes you make a call in order to set up a meeting with a legislator. If you're sending an email or a letter, um, a lot of times you're gonna just want an email or a letter in return before you're setting up um, a meeting. So if a meeting is what you desire with this legislator or congressperson, you're gonna to wanna to try to call their office. Um, the format of this call is gonna be really similar to how you would structure your letter or email. So you're gonna open with who you are and the reason for making this call, talk about patient safety and what it is that um, you're interested in, what kind of change you're interested in making. 
um, and then express your interest in speaking personally with the legislator. So although this might seem a little bit daunting, as I said, legislators are people too, and if you express that interest of talking to them person to person, um, you might fare a little bit better than if you gave a really general um, kind of scripted call. Um, so you can also find out a lot of um, legislators during this time during COVID are scheduling virtual meetings, so either through Zoom or Skype, um, and you might be able to request one. So in your research, when you're trying to find out more about your legislator, you can probably find on, on their website or on their office page whether or not they're taking meetings, and you can talk about this in your call when you either leave a message or talk to a staff member saying, hey, um, I would like to schedule a meeting for these reasons. Um, so usually, Calls are going to be filtered by a member of this legislator staff. Um, they're pretty busy, so they won't be answering the phone themselves, most likely. Um, but a staff member is more likely to relay your message to a legislator if it is compelling and personalized. Like we talked about, personalization and really sharing your story is going to be what gets to um, your legislator to make the biggest impact. So use that to your advantage. Although sharing your story might be difficult, this is the way to connect and for them to really take the weight of this problem seriously and hold a virtual meeting with you and consider that. So some, some tips for calling and scheduling meetings. Um, a lot of times members of Congress will have multiple offices. So this will be a home office in whichever state you reside in. And then there will also be a DC office. So calling each office gives you a better chance of landing a meeting with them. So these are really busy people. And like I said, you're gonna be talking to a staffer most likely. Um, and although it might be difficult to repeat your story this many times, um, this is the best way to actually get through to them and to get through and schedule a meeting. So making sure you're calling their different offices um, as well as emailing if they have multiple email addresses to email each of those um, and then same with letter writing if you're sending a letter in the mail you probably want to send it to both offices so that there's a better chance of someone actually passing that on to the legislator themselves um, so we mentioned that reaching out personally is really the best way to connect with the legislator they like hearing from their constituents individually because that's who they are in office to represent um, but the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, we do have a stake in this and we do want to help you um, in getting your message across and getting our message across. Um, so we can support you in scheduling a meeting and even in the meeting, if you'd like us to support you in your conversation, we can be there. Um, but what we're gonna focus on if we are part of the meeting is our transparency, aligned incentives, and uh, a push for a national patient safety board. So. If any of these are items that you are interested in or that you would like to push or talk to your legislator about, we are more than happy to support you in your meetings or in you know, reaching out to a legislator. So there are a lot of ways to get involved. Hopefully, hopefully these kind of tips will help you to individually reach out. Um, you can also, if you don't feel comfortable with a legislator, you can share your story with us and we kind of um if you look at our website you can see what we do with these stories and how we leverage them to get our policy pushes across and so in addition to providing support in a meeting that you might schedule if you have questions um, about contacting legislators we do have an interest form um, where you can let us know if there are specific questions that you have about contacting your legislator and if you need help finding you know the right person to contact we can help you with that so when we share out this um, PowerPoint after the um, webinar is over there will be a link for you to put in an interest form if you do need additional support and assistance so we encourage you to connect additionally with your peers and use our network of partners to you know share your stories not only with legislators and with people who are going to make a policy impact, but even just people like yourself who may have similar stories um, and can provide that support. So social media groups, LinkedIn groups, um, and even signing up for newsletters about patient safety can really help the movement 
um, and deafness out there. So with that, I will leave it to Sarah. We, I know there were some hands raised and some questions um, in the chat, so please feel free to put those in right now. Great, thank you, Sana. That was a wonderful overview and very helpful and even informational for, for our team, I'm sure. Um, it doesn't look like throughout the presentation we received any other questions aside from whether the webinar is recorded. So just want to reiterate, yes, this webinar is currently being recorded and we will give you access to the recording and the slides. Um, in addition, we will send out the interest form um, as a separate link just to ensure that you all have access to it. Um, and obviously, just because there are a lot of embedded links, I just want to highlight the interest form does um, give you the opportunity to list, you know, where you're located, what state exactly in the U.S. Um, you would like to be contacting. And if you have specific names of legislators that you'd like to contact, um, we would just like to ensure that you, you do put as much information as possible so that we can make sure that the foundation side is um, answering all your questions and pointing you in the right direction as it relates to um, the different groups that Sana highlighted early on. So with that said, um, Ariana, do you have any other comments or feedback that you'd like to give? No, um, maybe we can just sit for a minute or two and see if there's any other questions before we close out. Um, I know that we scheduled an hour and uh, we're just approaching the half hour, but we're very happy to give you all back uh, a half hour of your time if there are no questions. Um, the one thing that I'll point to and I'll make sure that we um, we highlight in the follow-up email um, is that the three issues that we talked about on the last slide um, around promoting transparency, aligning payment incentives, and establishing a national patient safety board, um, that there are some quick details both on the patient safety movement website as well as Unite for Safe Care depending on how you found us. Um, so on the patient safety movement website, we have what that draft le legislation is that uh, we suggest, and we've been having meetings with legislators for um, transparency and aligned incentives for the last um, several years. The National Patient Safety Board concept is new. Um, and I just figured I'd mention that we will be sending out um, an announcement within the next week or so around our position for a National Patient Safety Board, uh, thanks to the work of Sana, um, who's writing a white paper. So just wanted to use this opportunity as a, um, as I guess, just mini promotion for more to come, um, specifically around uh, the history of the National Patient Safety Board concept and what our formal recommendations will be as an organization. Um, I have not seen any other questions come through. Um, I will say that there, there was a question that came in from the individual from Saudi Arabia that I couldn't quite um, pinpoint the answer to. So um, if you do have questions that we weren't able to answer during the call, don't hesitate to shoot us an email and we'd be happy to help you um, if we were unable to answer your question during this time. And I see Tony Galvo's comment, please be persistent and make follow-up calls. So just wanted to share that with the larger group in case you didn't see that. But Tony is a great advocate for, you know, pushing legislation. And um, thank you, Tony, for all of your help and, you know, pushing this forward. Yes, and thank you to anyone else who might have been part of the interview process of making sure um, we address any of your questions and, and um and experiences. I know that there may be a few of you who've been on the phone uh, that we've reached out to in the weeks leading up to this webinar to make sure we learn from your successes and your mistakes in reaching out to congressional leaders. So um, with that, I will say thank you so much for joining. We wish you a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend.